You have had a particular interest in China, and if we can rip up the script off your comments, what I see permeating across all of international relations study of Asia is the technology and the history and our certitude and our belief in the Asian growth model. And uh, Professor Spence, you would suggest those two are going to bounce up against each other, and we, there's a mystery to what the outcome is going to be of technology in the Asian growth model. Well, that's right, Tom. I mean, so we, we are at the point where the, the digital technologies are powerful enough to, to um, outperform the labor-intensive, you know, process-oriented manufacturing <coughs> that was the core of the Asian growth model in the early stages of growth. And when that happens, then that, the obvious question is, what is the growth model for the early stage, meaning relatively poor, developing countries? I don't think this is a problem for the middle-income countries. The Chinas of the world, India's, you know... And right. I think they're okay. You know, by and large, these digital technologies will be a net positive for them. But for the poorer countries in Asia and in, in other parts of the world, in <coughs> Africa, there's a real open question about what the new relatively powerful right. growth engines are. I have two books of the summer. One of them is on Mueller and the FBI, but the other one is Robert Kaplan's wonderful new effort, The Return of Marco Polo's uh, World. And within that is the belief that the Asian model was tested through not dictatorship, but through a more strict authoritarian democracy or even non-democracy. Uh, what does technology do to that political model that worked in Singapore, worked in Taiwan, and worked after a number of efforts in Vietnam as well? Well, I mean, you have to adapt to it. You, you know, so the technology left, uh, you know, loose, unregulated, uh, you know, sets loose a whole set of forces in society and political processes that we're now seeing and, you know, trying to figure out. But I think that the outcome, Tom, is that they're going to regulate, you know, and, and the China case is pretty clear. I mean, China has a completely different regulatory model with respect to the Internet than the entire West. So the Europeans are moving in. We have a lightly regulated Internet. That's about to change. And in China, the Communist Party retains the right to access the data and retains the right to filter content when it deems it to be inconsistent with the broader social interests. Uh, and right, I think, but Professor, broadly speaking, that's the direction we're going. 